Yes, yeah, so research security training in the original draft, you know, OSTP gave us the message that we needed to implement research security training and be able to certify that personnel, appropriate personnel have taken that training. The draft requirements also contained a very specific list of what topics needed to be covered in that research security training. The other piece um, that was of note in the draft requirements was that the draft requirements talked about something called a research security breach finding. Now that was not a defined term, but what kind of caught everyone's attention was that in the event that this research security breach finding were to occur, we needed to conduct tailored training and then keep a record of that training. So, you know, happily, things are a little bit different in the final guidelines. So we are, you know, required as covered institutions to implement research security training. We have to ensure that covered individuals, which is essentially equivalent to senior and key personnel, um, we have to ensure that they have taken that training and we need to certify as such to federal research agencies. Now, in terms of timing or cadence of research security training, um, this isn't addressed in the final guidelines. So, you know, we're kind of speculating that the timing, the frequency may vary by agency. So that's something that we'll need to watch out for as the agencies release their implementations. The other piece of this is that there is arguably some flexibility in terms of what we do for research security training. So we have a couple of options in the final guidelines. The first option is to leverage federally developed research security training. And this is training made available on the National Science Foundation website. There are four modules, I'm sure you've all heard about them, um, and that is the first means by which we can address research security training. There's another option that the guidelines describes, and this other option is to um, use training that's developed elsewhere. Um, but we have to ensure that if we use that training that's developed elsewhere, that it covers a couple of specific topics. Now, the first topic is that we have to ensure that that training addresses behaviors that have resulted in the illegal transfer of U.S. government-supported research and development. So that's the first topic that has to be covered. The second topic is that that training has to communicate the importance of researcher participation in global discovery and the importance of attracting foreign talent to the United States. So, you know, it's a good thing, I think, that we have the option of either using these already developed trainings, which are, you know, albeit a little bit long, um, or, you know, we have the option to use other training provided it covers the specific talk of it, topics that are referenced. 